You've just got your footage back, you start to grade, and everything just breaks. How do you fix that? In this episode of Film Science, we deep dive into log and raw footage, and why sometimes it looks trash. So, to understand bad footage, we need to understand the camera and what it's actually doing to create that image. Because when you shoot log and raw, the process is different. As you point your camera at a subject, light enters through the lens and hits the sensor, a collection of millions of tiny photosites. These collect the light that hits them and convert it into voltage. The more bright, the more power. But before we have video, we need to convert this power into a digital format. The problem is, this voltage is analog, so it's a continuous number, and to record it in digital, we need simpler whole numbers. To do this, the camera breaks down the analog signal into digital steps. Think about it as turning an analog slide into a digital staircase. Less fun, but more useful. Say we have a value of 1.2, and only one and two are available. The camera will round down and give it a value of one. The number of these available values is called bit depth. 8-bit, which is the standard for computer displays and monitors, has 256 available values. However, most modern cameras like the R5C do it in 12 bits, which has 4,096 values available, much more than the 8-bit display. But after the simplification is where we get that difference between log and raw, and why some footage just starts to break when you try to grade it. So let's test it out. We're gonna shoot a test shot on some background paper in the studio. Now, when we shoot it in RAW, we can move it up and down and grade the colors and can't really push it to the point of breaking. When we do the same shot in 10-bit log, we still have a bunch of latitude, but eventually if we do some pretty extreme changes, we do get some banding. And shooting the same in 8-bit log, when we start to grade, it's definitely noticeable in the dark sections of the video. So, why does this happen? For raw video, the full 10, 12, or 16 bits of sensor information is saved to the card right there, and any of the further processing that turns that into watchable video happens when you come to edit. However, if you shot in log, this is where it differs. See, to save space and time and make your footage playable, the camera does a whole lot of extra processing to this log footage before it saves it. Most importantly for us, that 12-bit linear image is mapped onto an 8 or 10-bit logarithmic curve. But don't worry, this is not about to become a math class. This logarithmic processing is a further step of simplification, where our footage is mapped onto a non-linear curve of values. Doing this lets the camera store less data, and only the data that's important to human vision. Enough maths, time for biology. Human vision isn't simple. It's actually non-linear, like that curve. This thing called Weber's Law states that the human eye can only detect changes in brightness when they're about 2-3% to different from a previous or surrounding value. If we take, say, a brightness of 10 as our starting value, we could perceive a difference when it changes to 10.2 or 10.3, but say we were up at 100, it would take a difference to 102 or 103 for us to notice that change. This means that in the dark sections of the video, we can detect really small changes, but when it's really bright, it takes much larger changes for us to notice them. By mapping all our values on a logarithmic curve, we can keep all the information where it's most perceivable, but get rid of the information that we can't see. Because of this, log is much more efficient with its bit depth than raw, so its file sizes are much smaller. Raw usually comes in 12 or 16 bit flavors, whereas log only uses 8 to 10 bits. So why bother using these larger uncompressed files? The big one for us is color grading. Once you get to the grade and you realize, hey, this shot could do with being a little different, you start to manipulate and stretch those values, and things can start to break. Think of it again as a staircase. If we need to change the shape once we've made it, some of those steps are now gonna become too big to climb. Where in raw footage you have a lot more information to bring up and fill those gaps, in log, we kinda just got rid of that information. There's also some other things at play when we shoot in a non-raw format. To get the best image straight out of the camera and keep file sizes as low as possible, most cameras do a bunch of compression, sharpening, noise reduction, as well as storing that color information in a way that discards information you can't perceive, as long as you don't grade or manipulate the footage. So we might not be able to save your footage, but there are some things you can do to make sure this problem never happens again. Number one, shoot in a higher bit depth. If your camera can shoot 10-bit log, you should be shooting 10-bit log not eight. While there may only be two bits of additional data, each bit doubles the amount of points you have. Number two, 
Check that your log footage is being converted to sRGB using the correct profile. Different manufacturers have different curves, sometimes several. You have C-Log, C-Log 2 and C-Log 3, all just for Canon alone. By using the wrong conversion, either as a LUT or a color space transform, you'll be mapping those values incorrectly and your footage is going to look whack. Number three, shoot truer to your final shot. If none of this is possible, you're gonna need to shoot truer to your final image, getting your exposure and your contrast ratio correct in camera and grading way less. But ideally, if you can, shoot uncompressed big file raw. You're just gonna need to order a lot more laces. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something useful. Leave us a comment with any questions or ideas and don't forget to subscribe to Syrup Lab.